crisis meeting, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Yan, back in the Stanford Bridge studio, because why the ruddy heck not, eh? There are all these people, the, the ghosts of Chelsea fans past, walking past, all depressed from the way things are going, and Christopher Vivelle, Chelsea's sporting director, technical director, the guy we got from RB, he always wears an earpiece, he's sitting next to him. He sits next to Graham Potter in the dugout, which I find kind of weird, but compelling for a sporting director. Really getting amongst it, really watching the turgid sewage that's happening on the pitch, feeling it drench all over him. Poor guy. Anyway, I digress. He has called a crisis meeting, and we're going to talk about that and learn about that today here in the Stanford Bridge studio, um, citing an article written by Nizar Kinsella of the Evening Standard, uh, which I'm very intrigued and excited to learn about, and I'm so glad you, you, uh, you there, have decided to join me for this piece of content. Uh, I did do a pre another upload up the ba ba ba. Can't talk. I did another upload this morning, referencing the reportedly false claims that Chelsea have approached Maurizio Pochettino as for a new gaffer. I also talk a bit about Zidane, so feel free to go watch that previous upload for context in different potential managers, but I'm keen to learn about this crisis meeting, emergency crisis meeting. So thanks for joining me and thank you for um, dropping a like on the video. If you want to, it's a way of supporting the content creator. It's just a millisecond of your life. And uh, why not subscribe? Because you are welcome. I think we're about to hit 170,000. Imagine if you made the difference, you, that would be nice. All right then, article titled Chelsea Hold Emergency Graham... Bo it's an emergency Graham Potter meeting. Emergency Graham Potter meeting. Ahead of the Tottenham clash. There have been growing calls for the manager to be sacked after a nightmare run of results. And make no bones about it, boys, girls, ladies and gentlemen, friends and foes. Do I have any foes watching? Um, it has been a crisis run of results. I feel like I've got a hair in my ear, but I can't find it. See what Naz is saying. Chelsea's new technical director, Christopher Vivell, led an emergency meeting with Graham Potter and his staff on Tuesday, yesterday, uh, <clears throat> to address how their season is unraveling. Right, is everyone here? Sat, have you got a drink? Are you all sat down? You got a seat? How, how, how have we screwed this up so badly? Who wants to put their hand up? I reckon it's something like that. Uh, crisis talks were called at the club's Oh. <laughs> There's a window cleaner outside my window and that scared the ruddy heck out of me. I'm going to continue the video, but I feel vulnerable as there is a man outside my window cleaning my window. I thought it was raining. I thought a water tank exploded, but no, there's a man out there. Anyway, let's read on. Um, crisis talks were called by the club's uh, Cobham training ground after co-owners Todd Bowley and Benedict Barley gave their support to Potter and told their senior staff to stick together after calamitous few weeks. And it has been a calamitous few weeks when you lose away, oh no, sorry, at home to Southampton, 20th place Southampton, who don't win games, who didn't have a manager, um, who haven't kept a clean sheet in 400 years. You know, it goes on. The, the, the really negative elements of that game go on. But let's try and move away from that if we can. In what has been described by sources, so who, sources connected to Chelsea, as a strategy meeting. Vivelle led the discussions, which also involved new sporting directors, Paul Wynn Stanley and Lawrence Stewart. I'm glad we had a strategy meeting because um, we don't have a strategy right now. It looks like there's an, we're absent. The strategy is absent. I can't find the strategy. So there's I'm good. There's a strategy meeting. Boli and Igbali are not thought to have been present in the meeting of the football operation at the club. To be honest, I'm pretty surprised at that because they seem to be popping up everywhere. Boli and Igbali, way more than I could have ever anticipated when they bought Chelsea Football Club. They're, they're everywhere. They're literally everywhere. So the fact how they probably didn't want to get I don't know, unsettle people like the owners here. Just get on with it. Have your crisis meetings. Uh, Potter and his backroom team arrived at work determined to turn things around and talks centred around how to take the club forward. 
Well, there's only one way, and hopefully that's up, or it's the championship. There have been a full debrief on Saturday's 1-0 defeat by Southampton at Stamford Bridge. I thought we moved past this, um, which was greeted by boos from the Chelsea fans and calls for Potter to be sacked. Chelsea have no plans to sack Potter before Sunday's trip to Tottenham, but it was accepted that there's a lot to do to turn around a run of results that have seen their season uh, go into a tailspin. <clears throat> yeah, tricky. It's really the context, isn't it? Like, uh, like what happens in games now. But like I've said this a while ago, we need performances, not results at this point. And uh, that's why I personally was so annoyed at the Southampton game because... There was no performance, you know. Vivel Potter and senior first team staff in the room put a united front in to, uh, in a bid <clears throat> to resolve their issues at the club, including the new or the low confidence and morale of the squad. Well, it's difficult to feel good and boosted when you've had such tragic failures. Potter has been told to fight through uh, calls for him to be sacked and has had a full week to prepare for what feels like a crucial game against Tottenham. Yeah, true, but it, it's almost like the, when he's had a full week is when we've performed worse. It's almost like it's in Chelsea's DNA to to just constantly play games and you and you play better, maybe? I suppose that wasn't true of Conte in his first season. We won the league. Chelsea boss gave players a schedule to get days off. Of course, the um, the rumours going around the day after was that Potter was going to get canned and that training was cancelled. But yeah, it's since come out that they were scheduled two days off around the Southampton defeat and will now seek to instigate a turnaround after a dismal run of just two wins in 14 matches. That's good. Hearing that again. The more I hear that, the more helpful I think I'm, I'm going to feel. <laughs> Vivel, 36, oh, young man, uh, older than me though, uh, was appointed as technical director in December, having a similar role at RB Leipzig. Sporting directors, uh, Wynn Stanley and Stewart, have also been hired, of course, from Brighton and Southampton, um, to senior positions this season as a part of a major overhaul uh, behind the scenes at Stanford Bridge. Yeah, I spoke about this in, the, uh, you know, in my upload earlier. I said, look, one thing that I'd like to think that can unify Chelsea fans, you know, I'm, I'm completely sympathetic to everyone who's had enough of the manager, but I'm hopeful that, you know, everyone can feel unified in being happy about an infrastructure being developed at Chelsea, finally. Um, yeah, so Potter retains the faith of um, the Chelsea owners for now. Bowley is due to be at the Tottenham game, poor guy, while Egg Barley is set to attend matches against Leeds and Borussia Dortmund after that. Both were present for the Southampton defeat. Good. I mean, good, in it. You want them to be there to see to see that stodgy nonsense. They must be thinking, I don't know. Hmm. Um, sources insist... Bowley and Iqbali remain committed to their long-term plans, which have Potter at the heart of them. Well, they said, you know, Ornstein, who's up on his own in terms of reliability, said they want to judge Potter in years and not months. Potter, who held a no-holds-barred meeting with senior uh, Chelsea players last month, hopes to turn the situation around with performances and results. Well, I, like I said, I just want performances first. And yes, results would be good, but give me performances. Baby steps, I guess. Um, the Blues are languishing in... It's always languishing. I use that term as well. And it is the term. Languishing in either mid-table or 10th. Uh, 11 points out, outside the top four. It feels like it's more than that. You know. But, yeah. Um, so maybe we could still make Europa League or something. Um, and we're defeated 1-0 Borussia Dortmund in the first leg of the Champions League tie. And the return leg, of course, is the 7th of March. But to be honest, that of, like we've spoken about before, that defeat to Dortmund was not a good result, but it was a good performance. And I know you might think it's clutching at straws, but, again, not just Chelsea fans. Neutrals were like, yeah, Chelsea played way better than Dortmund in that game. And, of course, we were away at Dortmund as well, so... Um, that was a positive for me, but then such a nosedive to a profound negative. Chelsea are out of both domestic cups, and the Champions League represents their last chance to win a trophy this season. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Real Madrid slapping up Liverpool at Anfield was good fun, wasn't it? Shipping five goals. 
past the Scousers, it makes you think Real Madrid are pretty good and they could probably go all the way to the final to lose to Graham Potter's Chelsea, but it would still represent a good run for them. Ah, uh, um, look, crisis meetings, you need to expect this kind of stuff. I'm pleased uh, they're not just pretending nothing's happening behind the scenes. I mean, there's been too much investment. It's nice to see that Vavel took the initiative to do this um, rather than just being like, I'm a sporting director. <laughs> just playing football manager and like, we should buy him. Um, no, it's good that, you know, key figures and individuals are um, getting amongst it. You know, it's important. Um, anyway, it's in, let's see it on the pitch. Let's see it. If we beat Tottenham, it will be a good step in the right direction. I will probably react to Potter's press conference talking about that game. Not that he's going to give me any juicy one-liners, but, you know, I'll see what he has to say for himself. Guys, what do you think? I, I, I'm, I'm keen to watch the discussion continued from you guys in the comment section. I'll be down there. Um, and yes, thank you for your likes and subscriptions. Let's see if we can get to that sweet 170k. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other,